Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and depression counselor. Welcome to your depression recovery channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. As many of you know, I recently started out uh, a ritual here, beginning each of my videos with a joke. I got this from a guy named Samson, who is a checkout cashier at New Seasons Market last night in Portland. He gave it to me, and I was really liked it. So here was a joke. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies! I liked it. Okay, so the title of today's video is The Fear Behind All Fears and How You Can Overcome It. Recently, I've been making a lot more videos on anxiety, even though this is your depression recovery channel, because anxiety actually, more than even depression, is the most prevalent mental health disorder in America, affecting 55 million people. I and others who have studied anxiety have concluded that it's really just another form of fear. But fear of what? Well, when we humans were hunter-gatherers, our major fear was fear of survival. We were afraid of being eaten by bigger, badder species like cave lions and cave bears and saber-toothed cats and, and primates and uh, giant hyenas, etc. It was a tough world and we had reason to be afraid. In today's world, most of us are not subjected to these kind of fears, especially in the developed world. And yet we are still afraid. But afraid of what? I received an answer to this question many decades ago when I was at the renowned Esalen Institute in California, a personal growth center. And there I heard a talk by a well-known psychologist named William Schutz. At one point in the lecture, he said something that stopped me in my tracks. And this is what he said. All fear can be reduced to one basic fear, the fear of not being able to cope. The more I contemplated these words, the more I realized how true they were. To see why, let's look at some of the fears, the most common fears that many of us have. The fear of getting rejected, the fear of disapproval, the fear of losing a loved one, the fear of financial loss, the fear of getting ill, the fear of getting old, the fear of being alone, the fear of failing, the fear of making a mistake, and the fear of relapse. Now, at the bottom of these fears is one single fear, and that is the fear that we won't be able to handle whatever comes our way. But ponder this question. If you knew and had faith that you could handle whatever came your way, what would you have to fear? The answer is nothing. All that you have to do to diminish your fear is to develop your trust that you can handle whatever comes your way. Now, this is easier said than done, but one way to do this is using positive affirmations that focus on confidence and trust. My favorite is that of uh, the writer Susan Jeffers, who wrote a wonderful book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. The affirmation is, whatever happens to me, I can handle it, or more simply, I can handle it or I'll handle it. Another affirmation I use when I start to worry about the future was one given to me by a therapist, and it goes like this. I have the ability to create support for myself in my life. I have the ability to create support for myself in my life. My second tool comes from the title of the book I just mentioned, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. This is because the easiest way to overcome the fear of doing something is to go out and do it. Now, is this easy? No, it takes courage. But what is courage? It's not the absence of fear. Courage is the ability or the decision to move forward in spite of your fear. Here are two examples of where I moved forward in spite of the fear from my life. The first occurred many, many years ago at the beginning of my writing career. I had just written my first book of affirmations called Words That Heal, and I arranged to give a workshop on the topic at the Unity Church of Portland because Unity is really big on affirmations. Seemed pretty good. Then one day, it was a Saturday afternoon, I'll never forget it, I got a call from the board of directors who said that the minister had come down with ptomaine poisoning at a church picnic, and could I substitute for him that Sunday, in other words, the next day, because it might be a good way to promote my book. I said, really? I've never spoken to a church before. She said, well, think about it. I said, well, give me 30 minutes. So I took a walk around the block, and two things came to me simultaneously. One is, I am scared to death. And the other was, you can't miss this opportunity. you got to take it. So I called her back and agreed. And for the next 16 hours, I feverishly worked on a talk called Listening to Your Inner Voice. Well, the next day, it was just as if an invisible hand of uh, spirit were guiding me. 
Uh, everything flowed. There were actually substitute musicians, uh, besides me being the substitute minister. It was an amazing time, and at the end of the lecture, I got a standing ovation, and I got pre-orders for 40 books, even though they were still at the printer. Flush with confidence, next week I called a second Unity Church in Portland, and then one in California, and this started a five-year public speaking career. The second example I want to uh, share with you happened two years ago when I was in the middle of a really bad depressive episode, which I talked about in these videos. At one point I realized since nothing had worked, I needed to try ECT or electroconvulsive therapy, but I was really scared because I'd read so many reports of major memory loss and I've always valued my memory. But after weighing the pros and cons, I decided to move forward anyway. In spite of my fear, I got the procedure and it worked and I came out of the depression. These stories bring up an important truth. And that is when you overcome a fear, you build self-confidence, which makes it more likely you'll overcome the next fear. For example, when I succeeded at my Unity Church talk, it gave me the confidence to call other churches. And when the electroconvulsive therapy treatment worked, it meant that if I get depressed again, God forbid, I'll be more likely to try that treatment. And this brings us to our final truth. Pushing through fear is much better than living with the underlying fear that comes from feeling helpless and hopeless. Now, this is easier said than done, especially if you grew up like a client of mine whose mother always said, watch out, be careful, watch out, be careful. In other words, I don't trust you, you're incompetent. If you heard words like these, uh, I recommend that you go into therapy and find a way to overcome these disempowering core beliefs. Fortunately, I made a video on this subject called Healing Your Negative Core Beliefs, which I will post right below this video. I'll give you the link. This has been Douglas Block. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Much of the information came from the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, which I highly recommend. If you like this video, give it a like. Uh, otherwise, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you want to learn more about this work, you can do so by clicking on my photo. In the closing credits, you'll be taken to the subscribe channel, or if you click on the book, Healing from Depression, you'll be taken to healingfromdepression.com, my website. And if you click on the videos, you'll be taken to those. And until you meet again, or until we meet again, <laughs> I wish you the best in overcoming fear and not let it stop you from doing anything, okay? You are worth it. Goodbye.